House Chair, Deputy Alan Weinstein once said that listen to a man's words but give his actions more value before you give respect. The President's speech reminded me of a young black farmer, Mr. Renit Dex, who purchased a 400 farm through the land bank with the intention to commercialize it. A year later, his farm was hit by a three-year drought. He struggled to honor his yearly bank installments. The land bank initiated process to repossess his farm. The DA Western Cape Government Department of Agriculture provided him with the grant, whilst Grain SA supported him to fight off the effects of drought. However, as the damage from the drought worsened, he wrote to your Deputy Minister Mtebishi Sukwacha seeking help. Nothing came out of it. Minister Squatcha only not only failed to reply to him, but essentially ignored him and ignored his emails and messages. Mr. President, the response received from, by Mr. Dester from your minister's provincial office here in the Western Cape was as follows, I quote, due to the fact that you bought your farm privately, we cannot assist you with anything. In your sonar speech, Mr. President, you highlighted the importance of public sector private partnership, but the truth is your RET ministers do not believe in this economic building block essentials. The lack of accountability among your ministers and corrupt ANC government has left farmers without help or recourse. Yet no one is held to account up to date. The good news is that the DA led Western Cape governments understand the importance of public-private partnerships. They value implementation and accountability. It is through this process that the province has been able to keep comparatively low unemployment when compared to the other province in the country where ANC rules. The DA's Western Cape government has set a good example on how to support emerging farmers through the public-private partnership. The President's new consensus, which embraces the DA's policies, borrows from the Western Cape government's tried and tested red tape reduction, which has been a key initiative in driving investment in this province. Mr. President, you don't need 100 days to reach your consensus. What you seek to achieve is already being implemented here in the Western Cape. Without basic support system at policy and infrastructure level, the agriculture industry will not be able to deliver on, on, this, on its food security mandate, reforms and economic growth. The cater deployment animal has to be cut from the head in order to deal with cages who are only motivated by accumulation, debauchery and crass materialists. Mr. President, I fully agree that the government does not need to create jobs. Instead, it's the business that is creating jobs. The lack of reforms in land ownership in rural areas is a big stumbling block towards the meaningful participation of private sector in rural areas creating jobs. Mr. President, the truth is that nothing is happening towards reforming land ownership in rural areas. Yet no one is held to account, even Mr. Squatcher, who is here tonight. For businesses to invest meaningfully in rural areas, they need security of tenure. Our people in rural areas migrate to the cities for opportunities, living villages endowed with land because they cannot use the pieces of land for economic benefit. It's a fact. Mr. President, you mentioned that the country needs well-run ports to export their produce to overseas market. This is a basic function of a capable state that your government and your corrupt ANC has failed to fulfill this function and comrades are still settled in their cushy jobs is an indictment on your leadership, Mr. President. <laughs> Father Lepsley, a man who lost both his arms during the struggle against apartheid, stated the following at the State of the Nations of People's Voice. I quote, majority of South Africans believed by voting for the ANC, a better life will be delivered for all God's people. Today, the opposite has happened. 
Today, apart from the corrupt who still walk freely, millions of us are disillusioned, angry, and frustrated. Many are worse off than they were under apartheid. Close quote. While the DA welcomes your invitation, Mr. President, for public-private partnerships, the corrupt and the incompetent ANC cadre remains a hindrance to realizing this country's full economic potential. Mr. President, you rightly mentioned that horticulture has significant potential in driving job creation. Still, you failed to mention the livestock sector, which easily contribute 50% of the total value of agriculture in terms of turnover. Both Agricultural Research Council and Honest Abroad Biological Assets are failing the livestock industry. There are no vaccines at the moment. Food and mouth disease vaccines are being sourced from Botswana instead of being manufactured here. Farmers are at their wit's end because of the shortages of vaccines. Yet, no one is held to account. National Treasury approved 500 million for ARC to build a new FMD vaccine plant. It is alleged that 100 million was used to upgrade the offices and built a toilet and a canteen for a CEO in the corrupt ANC government. Yet, no one is held to account. The previous board of OBP hired a capable CEO with knowledge of vaccine. However, he was while he was busy trying to fix the institution, a board came in and he was allegedly made to face frivolous charges. The failing of OBP is a threat to animal health and the livestock industry. Your ANC cabinet is mum about this. It is about time that private sector is allowed to produce and distribute vaccines. In conclusion, President, we welcome the public-private partnership approach, but it is important that non-performers on the, on the right, corrupt and dead wood in your ANC cabinet, are dealt with to enable the realization of South Africa's full economic potential. I thank you.